everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, it's great to see everybody. I'm really pleased to be in Belfast. My first time over in Ireland. And uh, uh, I told my, my children that I was going to come back with an Irish accent. So if anyone can help me out with that later, please see me. Okay, so I'm from Black Economics. It's really a website that talks about money, uh, power, poverty, issues among black communities around the world. There are my social media contact details. Please do feel free to uh, follow me, interact with me, and um, visit the site, see what we get up to there. Okay, so I'm talking about six world regions where creative or digital industries have helped to bring peace. Okay, regions I'm gonna to cover today, Kibera and Nairobi, Rwanda, Angel Town in Brixton, Fleet Street, Kingston, Jamaica, uh, DRC, and Maboning in South Africa. Okay, this is Kibera. The first time I came across Kibera was when I actually visited Kenya, and uh, some friends of mine were driving me uh, just outside uh, Nairobi, the capital, and I saw this big area with all brown corrugated iron. And I said, what's that? You know, because we were driving for quite a long time and you could still see this, uh, this landscape. And it really is a, uh, it's a giant slum, basically. And the people who live in there, they, ha they don't have homes. They have to live there. They still have to pay rent, although there's no sanitation. And, you know, uh, it's a sad situation. And I asked to be driven into the area to, to get a closer look and... You know, I asked if you could come out of the car and go for a walk. They weren't very keen, but, you know, I, that always stuck with me. So later on, um, I put something about it on our website. And here is a close-up of some of the areas. And there's an amazing thing that's going on there, slum ballet. There were some children who had been taught ballet, even among the slums. And you can see the... Uh, she's standing in front of one of the corrugated iron homes. The children are now being taught so that they can perform in prestigious venues in Nairobi, but also around the world. And some dancers go on to study ballet abroad and join companies so that they can travel around. And it obviously helps to um, increase their economic well-being and they're able to help their families. Okay, next area is Rwanda. Rwanda's tech scene is actually quite amazing. Um, they've stepped up their game. They want to bring technology so that it helps with their development. Um, I'm sure you're aware of the, the history of Rwanda, where over 20 years ago, there were a million people who were um, killed in a mass genocidal um, situation. And they had to think about how do they come back from that. And they created a document called Vision 2020. If any of you get a chance to read that document, there are summaries of it online. There's also a link to it and articles about it on our website. They wanted Rwanda to resemble Singapore by 2020. So this started uh, 20 years ago, just, just under 20 years now, 2002. And th their, their feelings were that you know, we can turn things around. The way that Singapore was able to turn things around pretty fast, um, they created the document and they're following that document to the letter. There was actually a, a review in 2012 in terms of how they have um, proceeded, how they were actually fulfilling their aims, and it, it measured very positively against where they started from. They now have a factory which sells laptops. Now, some of you may not realize how amazing this is because uh, most of Africa are, are, are centers where they, they may consume items, whether it's food or clothing or um, technology, where they import everything. But now we're having a situation where one of the factories that's set up in Rwanda is making their own laptops and 1,600 laptops a day from a factory within Africa is an amazing thing to be celebrated. Not only that, they said that we want to have one laptop per child. I remember recently there was a, a, a Twitter photo of uh, someone teaching about um, computers 
and they were basically teaching about computers in the classroom in Africa with um, a drawing of a, on a blackboard of what a computer looks like and you know, hours pointing to what everything uh, meant. But here we have in Rwanda, they're saying, okay, no, we want one laptop per child. And in many schools, that's the situation. Rwanda has also um, been one of the forefronts of using drone technology. And they're using drone technology to deliver medical supplies to far-flung areas. Okay, so that is something that we don't actually see very much here in the West. But there it's becoming a, a normal state of affairs. Unmanned aerial vehicles are traveling and they're delivering uh, over 150 times across 21 locations in Rwanda. And the Guardian newspaper wrote an article about this and they called it Uber for blood, which I thought was really quite amazing. All right, Angel Town in Brixton um, is one of those uh, council estates where things have got um, you know, over time, things have got pretty, pretty bad, so that's, such that the police will have a wall chart of their area in their, their offices. And where it has, uh, where Angel Town is situated, it's got a little red mark that says, oh, this is the most serious area. It has a long history of gang violence. And um, two of the gangs mentioned here are the Gas Gang and PDC. I'm focusing on PDC. When you have a lot of youths who uh, don't seem to have very much to do or they don't have money to do particular things that other people would, ha would be able to do in other areas, then you have a situation where trouble can flare up and they may try and sell drugs or other things in order to get money because they don't have the money to buy the things that they want. And some of them are actually using this money to support their families. Here is a guy called Jar Jar. He is uh, now in his mid-30s but he decided that he was going to change things. He was in prison once, came out, did whatever he did again, ended up in prison again, and he met an older person who had been in prison um, for grievous bodily harm, and he was being told that he wouldn't get out and see his children. And Jar Jar thought, you know what, I don't want to be like this, I want to change. So he left prison and decided he was going to change his gang into a business enterprise. And the gang became PDC Entertainment. There was a book about it called Street Boys. You can look it up. And um, basically quite a number of enterprises has come out of that. Music has been uh, created. Um, he also does clothing brands. And um, if any of you have heard of one of the grime artists called Gigs, he came out of this group. All right, so he's now created a different role model for that area. He said that when he was growing up, there was no role model like him. But now he's able to mentor others and tell them, don't do what I did. This is what you can do. And this is how we made money. This is Kingston, Jamaica. It's a place called 48, 41 Fleet Street, where a dilapidated area was taken and artwork was placed on the walls. And you can see some of the artwork there. And the project is called Paint Jamaica. And there are tourists who travel from around the world to come and see this artwork. It's raised the profile of Jamaican art, and children are inspired by the art. I don't know if you can see at the bottom there some children. That gives you an idea of the, the scale of the art. It's pretty big, and people travel all over. OK, and then we have DRC Congo, Mama Africa, and Kisani brands. Basically, um, they're training um, uh, women in DRC how to do baskets, how to do embroidery, how to do sewing, and they've managed to make some money. There is um, a company in um, Belgium, Kisani, where their products are sold in the supermarkets and department stores. And you can see they're happy, they're occupied, they're getting a job, you know, and they're earning, and that's a wonderful thing. And there's some of the products there. And that's also made in DRC. And the last area is Maboning in South Africa, where homes are being used as art galleries. A number of people are being trained how to do art, and they're creating art. You can actually visit their homes. It's on a tourist trail. You get a guided tour. You can visit, and you can buy the art. So it's bringing visual art to local people and a welcome income 
is uh, derived from it. All right, you can see tourists going in and out of homes there. And it's in the township, you know. And if you look at one of those uh, big towers there, it would be nice if some of our horrible towers were painted like that, isn't it? It looks really lovely. So, that's my presentation. I hope you found that useful. These are details once again. We are doing our own creative project. It's called ICOB Art. And we just feel that, you know, all of us should take responsi responsibility for spreading peace. Don't presume that, okay, we're in a peaceful area, so we're all right. We can affect other areas too. Okay? So, thank you very much. <laughs>